Happy New Year and welcome to Larissa's Kitchen. squares, which is a variation on one of our most popular videos, the caramel pecan clusters. Now those were made as individual candies and while adorable, it's very labor intensive. This time around, we're making them as one entire sheet pan, which is not only easier, but it allows you to control the size of the candy much more easily. Also the entire thing will be topped with coarse sea salt. Now unfortunately, our cat Beast, who had a very popular cameo in the original video, is no longer with us, so she's just going to have to be here in spirit. Let's see what we're going to need. I'm making these in an 11 by 15 inch jelly roll pan, and size is important here. If you make it in too large of a pan, the caramel layer is going to be way too thin, but if you make it in too small of a pan, the caramel layer is going to be too thick for these to eat. And we need to cover this with a layer of nonstick aluminum foil, and remember the matte side is the nonstick side. For the bottom layer, we're going to need about three and a half cups of toasted pecans. Now I'm using whole pecans, but you could use pecan pieces or chopped pecans. I've also used a mixture of pecans and slivered almonds and it was wonderful, so if you're feeling adventurous, don't limit yourself. For the caramel portion, we'll need one cup of butter, and this is salted, along with one pound of brown sugar by weight, and it does need to be measured by weight. I've also got two cups of light cream or half and half, along with one cup of light corn syrup and one tablespoon of vanilla. We'll also need a 12 ounce bag of milk chocolate chips along with coarse salt to top this whole thing. So first off, we're starting with the pecans. First, we need to roast these pecans and we're roasting them in a dry pan over medium heat. These need to be stirred pretty much continuously. Once we start to smell these become fragrant and nutty and they'll turn a little bit brown, then we know they're done. We do not want to burn them. If you can toss these, that's fine, but on this induction coil, I can't lift the pan off. You'll also notice that the uh, pecans start making a different noise when you um, when they're toasted. They'll start to sound a little more hollow. Okay, some of these, specifically this one, I don't know if you can tell, are starting to get very brown. So I don't want these to burn. I'm just gonna turn this off. And then these are going in the pan. And these need to be in a single layer. Okay, we do not have to wait for the butter to melt. We can just add everything in. All right, and then we just need to stir this until all the sugar is dissolved and the butter is melted. This is over medium heat still. And this is a three and a half quart saucepan. You need a minimum of three and a half quarts. Four quarts would be better. All right, once this comes up to a boil, we may have to adjust the temperature either up or down. We want there to be a gentle simmering roll across the entire surface. So if it's boiling too hard, we'll turn it down. If it's not covering the entire surface, we'll have to turn it up just a little bit. All 
All right, this is starting to boil, so I'm gonna clip my candy thermometer in here. Okay, this is just above medium low, and this is about what we want for the surface of these bubbles. Now you don't need to stir it that often. I stir it every once in a while just to make sure nothing is burning back behind the um, thermometer. This whole process is probably gonna take about 45 minutes to get up to 240 degrees. Okay, we are at 240. I'm just going to clean this off a little and then add in the vanilla. All right, then this is going to evenly go over those pecans. Okay, now we can't move this too much, so try to evenly pour it over. Don't just pour it all in the middle. All right, if you can, and you need to, just kind of move the caramel as carefully as possible over all of these pecans. All right, now this is extremely hot, so don't touch the pan if you can avoid it. Even the handles are very hot right now. Okay, before we put these on top, we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes just to set up a tiny bit. All right, so we're gonna be putting the milk chocolate chips on here, all of them. We need to put them in a single layer on top of this caramel. And then we're gonna wait uh, maybe 10 or 12 minutes until they're all shiny. That means that they're melted. And then we're gonna smooth this into a single smooth layer on top. All right, you can easily see these are very shiny. So that means they're pretty much melted. So we are just going to quickly smooth this into a very smooth, thin layer. You don't want any of the uh, chocolate chip shapes showing. So if you still see chocolate, chip, uh, chocolate chips whole, you need to just keep smoothing until those shapes are completely smooth. And we need to make sure this gets over the entire surface. And last, we're gonna add some coarse salt. Now, this happens to be coarse salt from Thailand, but any coarse salt will do. And I have to say that both my mother and mother-in-law, and indeed all of our neighbors, raved over this candy. So, Mom and Shirley, uh, there's more on the way if you haven't gotten it already. All right, not too much salt, but you definitely want to make sure that every piece is going to have a nice amount of salt. These have been out of the refrigerator now for a couple of hours so that they're back to room temperature. You can't cut them directly out of the refrigerator. The caramel is just too hard. First though, we do need to get them off this nonstick aluminum foil. OK, 
Okay. Ooh, these are soft. There's the bottom. Okay, I'm cutting these into about one inch squares. You can cut them bigger or smaller. It's time to give these salted caramel pecan squares a taste. Now everyone wanted to see the consistency of the caramel when I tried these in the original video, and I'd just like to tell you it's very difficult to eat candy decorously on camera. I'm probably gonna end up with chocolate and caramel on my face, so here goes. And I already know this is nice and soft. Okay. Wonderful. So good. Today, I'm making, uh, I don't know what I'm making. 